couple of key things that are important in having um, a 3D tunnel network. First of all, you have to be able to integrate the entrance and exit of the tunnel seamlessly into the fabric of a city. So, by having a an, an elevator, sort of a, a sort of a, a car skate that's on on an uh, an elevator, you can integrate the entrance and exits uh, to the tunnel network oh just by using two parking spaces. Um, and then the car gets on a skate. There's no speed limit here, so uh, we're designing this to be. Uh, able to operate at 200 kilometers an hour, or about 130, 200 kilometers an hour, or about 130 miles per hour. I'm trying to dig a hole um, under LA. I mean, right now, I think one of the most uh, soul-destroying things is traffic. It's, it takes away so much of your, your life, and your, this, this, it's, it's horrible. So we've got a pet snail called Gary. Um, this is from Gary the snail from South Park. <laughs> I mean, sorry, um, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, so, so Gary uh, is is capable uh, of, of currently he's capable of going 14 times faster than than, than a tunnel boring machine. <laughs> okay. You you so want to beat Gary? We want to beat Gary. <laughs> yeah. He's he's not a patient little fellow, and we want the, to. <laughs> That will be victory. Victory is beating the snail. <laughs>
it, it, yeah, it's quite difficult to dig tunnels normally. I think we need to have at least a tenfold improvement in the cost per mile of tunneling. And how could you achieve that? I guess, actually, if, if you just do two things, you can get to approximately an order of magnitude improvement, uh, and, and I think you can go beyond that. So the, the first thing to do is to cut the tunnel, tunnel diameter uh, by a factor of two or more. So, to, so a single road lane tunnel, would, uh, uh, according to regulations, has to be 26 feet, maybe 28 feet in diameter to allow for crashes and emergency vehicles um, and sufficient ventilation uh, for uh, combustion engine cars. But if you, if you shrink that diameter to what, what, what we're attempting, which is 12 feet, which is plenty to get an electric skate through, uh, you drop the, uh, the diameter by a factor of two and the cross-sectional area by, by a factor of four. So, uh, and the, the tunneling cost scales with the cross-sectional area. So that's roughly a half order of magnitude improvement right there. Then tunneling machines uh, currently tunnel for half the time, then they stop, and then the, the rest of the time is putting in reinforcements for the tunnel wall. So if you, have, if you design the machine instead to do continuous tunneling and reinforcing, that'll give you a factor of two improvement. Combine that, and it's a factor of eight. Uh, also, these machines are far from at being at their, their power or thermal limit. So you can jack up the power to the machine substantially. I think you can get at least a factor of two, maybe a, a factor of four or five improvements on, the, on top of that. So I, I think the, it, there's a, a fairly straightforward series of steps to get uh, somewhere in excess of an order of magnitude improvement in the cost per mile. Um, and um, our, our target, actually, is we've got a pet snail called Gary. Um, this is from Gary the Snail from South Park. <laughs> I mean, sorry, um, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, <laughs> so, so Gary uh, is, is capable uh, of, of currently, he's capable of going 14 times faster than, than, than a tunnel boring machine. <laughs> OK. <laughs> You, you so want to beat Gary? We want to beat Gary. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's not a patient little fellow, and we want the, to, that will be victory. Victory is beating the snail. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people imagining, dreaming about future cities, they imagine that the, actually the solution is, is um, sort of flying cars, drones, etc. You, you, you go above ground. Um, why isn't that a better solution? You save all that tunneling cost. Right. I, I'm in favor of flying things. I would say do rockets. So I, I like things that fly. This is not some inherent bias against flying things. But th th there is a challenge with flying cars in that they, they'll be quite noisy. Uh, the, the wind force generated will be very high. Uh, they, th there's, um, let's just say that if something's flying over your head, if, if there are a whole bunch of flying cars going all over the place, um, that is not an, exi an, an anxiety-reducing uh, <laughs> situation. Um, you don't think to yourself, well, I feel better about today. Um, <laughs> you're thinking, like, did they service their hubcap? Or is it going <laughs> to come off and guillotine me as they're flying with us? Um, and so, so, you're, so you've got this vision of future cities with these, these rich 3D networks of, of tunnels Underneath, is there a tie in here with, with Hyperloop? Could you apply these tunnels to use for this Hyperloop idea you had, you released a few years ago? Yeah, so um, you know, we've been sort of puttering around with the Hyperloop stuff for, um, for a while. We, we built a Hyperloop test track adjacent to SpaceX just for a student competition uh, to encourage innovative ideas in transport. Um, it, it actually ends up being the, uh, the, the biggest um, vacuum chamber in the world after the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, by, by volume, so, um, so, so we, that, it, was, it's, it was sort of quite, quite fun to do that, um, but it was kind of a hobby thing. And, and then um, we, we think we might, so we developed a little pusher car to push these, the, the, the student pods, um, but we're going to try seeing how fast we can make the, the pusher go if it's not pushing something. <laughs> so, I mean, like, sort of cautiously optimistic we'll be able to be faster than a, uh, in, the, in the world's fastest bullet train, even in, in a 0.8-mile stretch. Whoa. Um, Good break. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's either <laughs> going to smash into tiny pieces or... But you can, you can, picture, you can picture then a Hyperloop in a tunnel yes. running quite, quite long distances. Exactly. So, so in, in looking at tunneling technology, it turns out that in order to make a tunnel, you have to... Uh, 
uh, in order to seal against the water table, uh, you've got to typically design a tunnel wall to be uh, a, a good to about five or six atmospheres. Um, so to go to vacuum is only one atmosphere, or near vacuum. So uh, actually, it, it sort of turns out that automatically, if you build a tunnel that is good enough to resist the water table, it is automatically capable of holding vacuum. Huh. So yeah. And so, so you can actually picture this, like, like what, what kind of length tunnel do you, is, is in Elon's future to running Hyperloop? Yeah, I, th I think there's no, there's no real length limit. Uh, you, could, you, could, you could dig as much as you want. Um, I, I think the, like, if you were to do something like um, a DC to New York uh, Hyperloop, I think you'd probably want to go underground the entire way because it's a high-density area. It does, you're going, you're going um, under a lot of buildings and houses. And if you go deep enough, you cannot detect the tunnel. Um, this is, sometimes people think, well, it's going to be pretty annoying to have a tunnel dug under my house. Like, if that tunnel is dug more than about three or four tunnel diameters beneath your house, you will not be able to detect it being dug at all. Um, in, fa in fact, like the, um, if, you, if you're able to detect the tunnel being, being dug, you, whatever device you're using, you can get a lot of money for that device from the Israeli military, who's is trying to detect tunnels from Hamas. Um, <laughs> and uh, from the U.S. Uh, Customs and Border Patrol that are trying to detect drug tunnels. So uh, if you, the, the reality is that uh, Earth is incredibly good at absorbing vibrations, and once the tunnel depth is below a certain level, it is undetectable. It, maybe if you have a very sensitive seismic instrument, you might be able to detect it. So you've started a new company to do this called The Boring Company. Very nice, very, right. very funny. Um, but how, well, what's funny how, about that? How, how, um, um, how much of your time is this? Two or three percent. You've, you've bought it a hobby. This is, this is what an Elon Musk hobby looks like. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Like, we actually, you know, this is basically interns and people doing it part time. So this is, um, like, we bought, like, we bought, you know, um, some secondhand machinery and. It's just, it's kind of puttering along, but it's making good progress, so 